treat it like death row meals. I treat it like charcuterie. Hey, hey, you guys, your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in. Um, what's today? Sunday, and we are talking about love after lockup. No, we're on life after lockup. Y'all know there's so many god dang spinoffs of this series. Right now, we're talking about life after lockup, but then we're gonna get love during lockup. Um, hold on, let me make sure the light is on. Um, how Erica De Niro put it, is this recording? <laughs> Shout out to Erica. But yeah, you guys, your girl G here. PG for tuning in. Like I said, we're going to talk about life after lockup um, because it is a little bit of self-care Sunday. I'm feeling a little bit um, tropical today. The question is, how tropical? Mm. Do I take half? Do I want to do half? Or just want to do the whole thing? F it. Whole thing it is. <laughs> That's just the mood for today. Um, so yeah, chew that on up and just enjoy the ride. I love me a good Eddie, but the problem is sometimes you be forgetting you be taking them. That just be the crazy part. You forget you take them. The next thing you know, you do doing laundry. You sitting here wondering why you feel like you've been doing laundry for an hour. But nonetheless, you guys, life after lockup, I'm a little bit late on this. So let's go ahead and get into it. I know I didn't get a chance to review last week's episode. I was in the middle of a whole busy weekend. I was in auntie mode, had my nieces and nephew come over. So I just was tapped out. I did not have the energy to do it. But we're going to get into this episode. Even though this episode was a little bit milder, there are definitely still some things to discuss. Okay. So, you already know what to do. Make sure you drop it in the comments. Make sure you hit that like button. Okay, did your girls wonder in the good old algorithm? And if you're new to your girls' channel, go ahead and drop it down in the comments and let me know where you found me at. Go ahead and let me know where you slid on through here, okay? Um, so, open up the episode. We have Bianca and Daniel. Now, for those of you who have been on your girls' channel, y'all know me and Bianca, oil and water, okay? I just don't like Bianca. She literally reminds me of a bratty teenager. Like she literally throws fits, she pouts, and it's just like she does stuff. And then when it's time to explain how her actions could cause, you know, somebody else's reaction, it's just not clicking. I.e. you have a boyfriend slash fiance slash wannabe husband that is an addict. And you keep telling not only him, but his family a mom who has already lost a son to overdosing addiction and you are constantly telling that mama to, well it's your it's your son with the problem not me like i'm gonna stay drinking my liquor like <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about uh even though we're in a relationship i don't care like i don't care i'm gonna do what i want to do because drinking is fun although girl you literally had your head knocked in because of a drunk driver so it's just kind of like it, the fact that it's not clicking is even more reason why we understand that you're on the pathway to hell. Like you are basically on the roadway to hell and you don't care who you take down with you. And it's a very dangerous game that she is playing, especially for the fact that last episode, I want to touch on the thing that I did not like. And she did exactly what I told y'all she was going to do. Didn't I tell y'all on one of the first reviews, I said, Bianca's one of those girls who's going to go home. I mean, go out, get drunk, come home and try to rub it off on her boyfriend and think, oh, if I seduce him into it, then like he'll he'll just cave into it. And when she was drunk, she kept trying to kiss him. And Daniel was like, no, no, like get up off me because he didn't want to taste the alcohol on her on her breath, essentially. Like one taste of alcohol literally is just all it takes. Like when people feel like, oh, not only that, he's still recovering in a way in which he's still having slip ups because he relapsed in prison. And so in her mind, all she thinks of it as is, well, you know, he doesn't wake up, you know, wanting to do drugs. No, Sherlock, like no addict wakes up thinking like, oh, I'm going to go do drugs today. Like it literally sometimes is a split decision. And here you are like trying to kiss him and like think it's funny to be like, oh, give me a kiss. Like she literally is on the pathway to destruction. And if he falls back into the addiction or falls back into liquor, along with her habits of alcohol, with the amount of money that she has expendable, y'all, that is a recipe for disaster. That is a the episode of, of intervention if I ever seen one. But nonetheless, back to this episode, they're basically picking up where they left off from the fight that they had the night before because of it. So now it kind of snowballs into like how he feels about her. 
kind of really being, um, I, I guess I'll say forceful uh, in the aspect of like her thing is like, I get where both of their sides are. Like on her side, she's feeling like, well, dang, first of all, I just spent all this money while you were locked up. I spent all this money to move here. I'm with nobody. I'm all by myself. Like I've done all of these things. And so when I ask you for a simple cup of coffee, it's like, dang, that's the least you can do to show me that you care. But in Daniel's mind, he's thinking, well, I am show you that I care, girl. Like I woke up, I cooked you breakfast, you know? And so the coffee is like the least you could do is get up and get your own coffee. But I think it was the manner in which Bianca did it, which was she did it as asked for in more of a like, expectation kind of way where she's already feeling like well nigga, you owe me like you owe me and so that's why he's like don't throw that in my face you did those things for me because you love me right so don't try to throw those things back in my face so then daniel starts going into this whole rant of like i'm not your maid like cooking and cleaning and you know things around the house like i'm not just gonna be picking up after you like you got legs and so she's like well that worries me because what if like we had kids you know am i just gonna be sitting here doing it by myself and he's like well no you're like no that's different i'm in the back of my head it's like no it's really not because if she's with child and you plan on being the the father that's a better version of what you already were to the son that you already have which is absentee that's gonna require you to do a lot of getting up daniel it's gonna require you to do a lot of cooking and cleaning and and, and maidening help okay so already bianca's thinking red flag red flag and then as she's talking, like, this is so pointless, like, you don't get it. He was like, stop talking. And, like, he raised his voice. And I saw it in her face. She literally had, like, a PTSD moment. She literally, you saw her face kind of was like, don't yell at me. Like, she got trembled. And I think that's truthfully, honestly, one of the first times that he's raised her voice at her like that. And so she immediately shut down. She was like, don't yell at me. Like, don't talk to me like that. If you talk to me like that, like, I'm going to shut down. And I don't want to do that. Like, I literally, like, hate you right now for doing that. Like, don't yell at me. And so he stands up and is walking off. And so she's already threatening basically like, well, maybe we don't need to be together because she's pushing for the whole marriage thing. And he's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Ah, ah, ah. Got to be quicker than that. Marriage, we don't need to put that on the table right now. And so she did ask a fair question of like, well, why the heck did you ask me to marry you while you were locked up? Like, what did you do that for? And finally, he admitted that he kind of did it. He said it in the wrong way. He said it like, well, it was just, a, it was just a dumb thing. And it was like, don't say it like that. Like, don't say it like, it was dumb for me asking you to marry me. Like, it, it should have been said like that. But it really was impulse that made him do that. He didn't want to want to lose her. One, because I guess he loved her. And two, because she had the onions. okay? She had the coinage that he needed, you know, to maintain his prison life, as most of those, you know, convicts do. Um, but now that marriage is off the table, shoot, plan B need to be on the table. Uh, if you know what I mean, Bianca, because what's going on right now between y'all, a baby does not need to be thrown into that mix at all. But she literally, you can tell also with how she was talking to the producers, she was like, this is how it starts. You know, it starts with the yelling, you know, it starts with something small, like yelling, and then comes the throwing things and then comes, you know, the physicality. And I think she did express that she was in a, a you know, a, a, a domestic situation in her last relationship. So I think she's, you know, obviously still needs to heal from that. Obviously, and with that whole baby miscarriage situation. And then not to mention, you know, she's so young and it's like impulsive. She's young, impulsive and with a lot of money. That's just a recipe for disaster. And then on Daniel's end, he's already kind of feeling like indebted to her because she has basically bankrolled his whole life. And he's not going to be having these kind of like ego pride issues for when she maybe does ask for him to do something considerate for her because it's not unfair that she asks like you do little things to show that you care, Daniel. But in his mind, it's immediately going to go to basically... I'm not going to be a little bitch, like in short words, like you're not going to have me run around doing stuff for you because you've done all this stuff for me, essentially. And he's going about it, thinking about it the wrong way because he really would not have nothing if it wasn't for her. So basically, to sum all their, their stuff up, two words, 
shit show. Okay. So moving on, we have Teeny and Rob. You know what I'm going to say about Rob. Okay. Rob. Rob. Okay. He literally just looks like he could be on the scene with like a, a, I don't want to necessarily say like, who does he remind? Like he gives like nineties heartthrob, like handsome, you know, y'all get what I'm trying like how I'm saying, like he just gives nineties heartthrob vibe. But nonetheless, he wakes up with Teeny, get ready to go to work, do the smooches, morning, hugs, kisses, husband, wife, and um, he goes to work. And so I guess basically on his lunch, she comes and, you know, hangs out with him and things like that, brings some lunch and whatnot. So we finally get a sneak peek into uh, Rob's job. He does kind of like a maintenance for like the trucking and thing like that. But, you know, this is different for Rob. You know, he's like, ah, shoot, growing up, he didn't have no job. He got locked up at 17. So basically in prison, he was gambling and doing all types of such. And he was making, you know, bankroll. It is one thing to be like, I made the most money I ever made in my life while locked up. But that's what he did. He was gambling and I don't know what else <laughs> on the inside. Shoot, I know there's a lot of dudes on the inside who basically become commissary kings. And hey, I got the honey buns on deck. I got the ramen noodle packs on deck. Okay, I got the cigarettes on deck. But if you also, you know, are in with a security guard, <laughs> you also might got the drugs on deck. Shout out to Bell Collective. Oh, you know, I'm hooked on the drugs. Those, if you know, you know. <laughs> So now that he's out, he's trying to go on the straight and narrow. And as most people know, straight and narrow also means broke. It's so unfortunate that all the people who follow the laws be the brokest. It is so hard when you be looking at all the scammers and fraudsters <laughs> out here just living the life. And it's just, you be thinking ahead like, I know I could probably commit me a little fraud, a little PPP fraud, you know, a little something like, hell, if the government can steal from folks, why can't I? But the problem is, I'm just not set up for jail like that. You know, I like my comfortability. Um, yeah, no, nah, that's just, mm -mm, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> so, and it's like, I don't want to be the one that God make a lesson out of. Like, I don't want to be the one, but... <laughs> Rob is sitting there with Teeny and speaking of money, he basically is like, now look, I know I've been working and everything, but if I want to get into like driving where there's more money, it's going to require, you know, classes and everything. And that also requires money as everything costs. It literally costs to breathe out in this bitch. Okay. So she has to get a job and she's like, obviously you can tell she's like, I've been enjoying being off, she's been working since she was 20 when she had her first, when she had her daughter. So I'm sure for a lot of women, it feels good to like be like, shoot, my man got it. <laughs> what, what, um, uh, everybody hates Chris. The mama be like, I don't need this. My man got two jobs. Okay. Like that's how she feels right now. I ain't got to go to work. My man got it. But, but, uh, he don't got it. Okay. So now you're gonna have to get back to work. And she said, all I got to do is spruce up my resume. And, you know, it shouldn't be that hard. Now, I don't know what field she was working in, you know, before she stopped work, like before she quit um, or went on a hiatus. I don't know what her field is. I'm a little concerned that she's thinking like, oh, in two weeks, I'll have a job because man, if you ask everybody else out here who's been filling out these applications, jobs be like we hiring, but then ain't hiring nobody. You, you literally could go in overqualified at this point with some of these companies. Um, so yeah, after he gets off work, he comes home and they start talking about everything. And this is where Tina, Tina, I'm having to get into it a little bit because you act a little bit like Zuri. She tells him about the, the, the season pass with the kids and how it was $250. And he perks up. He was like, wait a minute. Whoa. Cause I already told you at lunch, like anything over a hundred dollars, let me know. But that's not what Tina did. Tina. In her mind, although it was a reasonable purchase, I get what she's saying. Like, shoot, if they have a whole pass and it's unlimited amount of times for two fifty, that's way cheaper than us, you know, paying to go to any type of arcade or this, this, and that. Like, shoot, we can just literally go there for a quick little breaky break. But Teeny, you're not focusing on what the principle of the problem is, which is you didn't have the discussion with him. See, she's like putting on him, like you're being upset. Oh my God, it's just a it's just the past. Like, why are you being so upset about it? And it's not the past. That's the problem. The problem is you didn't communicate with him. 
And Zuri tried to guess like uh, Troy into the same thing. Everybody always talking about they want to hear the truth, but when they hear the truth, they can't handle it. No, Zuri, the problem with that you went uh, that you wasn't telling Troy the truth. The problem is you want to wait till now. Like you know, he ain't got a problem with the truth. He got a problem with you. You were waiting to talk about it with him, and now y'all two months behind on rent, and now you want to throw it in his face. Like, hey, I'm finally telling you the truth. Well, girl, wait a minute, that's too late now, and now you get mad at him. No. And so, TV, you are missing the point of like, he's not, you got to communicate with that man, especially him being a man that's trying to be a provider out of jail and everything, trying to go about it the right way. Like, you can't be sneaking stuff up on him like that because it, he'll slip and end up back in the streets and then you be upset. So now they downstairs and it's very clear now she want to pick a fight with him. Oh, he's like, like, you shouldn't have did that. Da, 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 da. She was like, two weeks I have a job did. So she decides to finally, I guess, try to pick something wrong with him. So she's like, that damn tattoo on your arm, you got two weeks to get rid of that too. Two weeks I find a job and two weeks you better find somebody. He was like, because they're thinking, he's like, you spending money that basically you don't got yet. Because it's like, well, I'm going to get a job. And he was like, but you ain't got a job right now. Like, we need the onions right now and you ain't got it. So all this talking about I'm getting, I'm getting don't mean squat when it comes to paying for sh right now. And so she brings up that tattoo. <laughs> Rob, get rid of that goddamn tattoo, that prison tattoo. It's ugly anyways. The girl look like her name is Karen. The way it's tattooed on your arm. And I kind of almost feel like he's one of those dudes where it's like he don't necessarily care about that. That's the woman. But it's one uh, a kind of an ego thing. And two, it's just like I like to have it there as a. I don't know, not just like a, a keepsake, you know, how people like even though these are all relationships that have ended, people be keeping keepsakes from their relationships. I think that's what that tattoo is. But. You got a woman now to uh, rob, so you don't need to cover up with something because it shit look ugly anyways. It's giving prison tattoo. But they basically fight, and she was like, two weeks to get that tattoo up off your arm and two weeks for me to get a job, okay? Uh, so we'll see how that pans out. So moving on, real quick, um, what's that girl's name? Kim, Joey, um, she's looking for wedding dresses, but we all know Joey got a drug problem. Uh, also, we know that they did a DNA test for one of her sons. I think the name is Kaysen to see if Joey, you know, in the case of seven year old Kaysen, <laughs> Joey, you are the father. <laughs> Jacob thinking on Mari. When I tell you, Mari was ahead of his time. When everybody used to be sprinting, running to the bed, <laughs> running and falling out. Like, you'd be like, girl, if you don't get your ass back on stage, <laughs> this is the third time you done been here trying to figure out who this baby daddy is. <laughs> and every single time they get upset, look at the eyes, Mari. Look at the nose, Mari. Point out to the screen. You can't tell me that don't look like JC on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's talking with her cousin. And the irony is the fact that her cousin and Kim both then hopped on Joey, okay? Joey's old legs, hips, and body, body. I didn't know Joey had all that hips, y'all. Not until somebody pointed it out on Twitter. I did not know he had all them hips. Um, Looking like Squidward when he ate all them Krabby Patties. So basically, she's explaining to the cousin the whole situation. And she's just kind of like, girl, I don't know what to do. Here I am looking to get married again for the third time, but shit, I'm also not divorced either. So now the cousin's like, girl, look at the mess you done got yourself in. You try to get married again, not only to Joey, who ain't got no job. He's also a recovering addict. And I'm sorry, y'all, Joey is giving relapse central. And I think he's also looking for a purpose and a savior and looking and see if this son is his because like Kim said it best, like, he's like, yeah, you can figure out this if he's yours or not, but it's not just that. Like, now it becomes a responsibility. And a responsibility for Joey right now, all that pressure, it ain't looking too good. And the way he denied that drug test, not denied it, but necessarily kind of was like a little shaky when old dude asked about it, is giving real, got to keep my good eye on you, Joey. Um, but Kim is the one bankrolling everything. We already know he can't keep under budget. And it's just kind of like, this is a recipe for a disaster. 
But you know, the cousin, she wanna be there for Kim. Kim, you look a real stupid right now, if you ask me. But we'll see how that plays out after the whole DNA test and everything. She's in her mind just kind of worried about it. Um, and then if it comes the fact that this uh, boy is his, what if the, the ex-husband doesn't, you know, divorce her, try to make it harder for her or to be petty? Like all that stuff can be a snowball effect. So, well, I guess we'll see next episode whether Joey is the pappy or not. So another one looking for a wedding dress is Bree and Key Rock. So they are at the, the little um, diner going through their finances because y'all know they have been in government hotel assistance because Texas then denied them for the second god dang time. I really do feel bad for them because in this situation, Key Rock is already off parole, so that helps a lot. Um, and so in that situation, when they're in the diner, you know, they're going over their finances and Key Rock kind of was like, you know, if I have to, you know, go to Texas because Brittany basically was like, look, if you got to go to Texas because that's your job, like you might not keep that job. And that is a very thing. Having an HVAC job is very lucrative. It's a lot of money, you know, and that's the only way to help, you know, kind of both of us in this situation you go ahead and go. And Key Rock was like, the only way I'll go is if you marry me. And so she just kind of like, what? He was like, yeah, let's elope. Because at the end of the day, like they're sitting there talking about, oh, family, this family, that. If we get married, then I'll technically be your family. And they want her name on a lease now all of a sudden. They're like, yeah, you got to have your name on a lease too. Like it's definitely given they're trying to make it difficult for her to kind of deter her from coming. And so she agrees. And so now they're looking for a dress. They don't want to tell nobody though, because it's all, it's an elopement, but they also know their family is crazy. And if they find out they'll be pissed off. Um, but they agree nonetheless, because at this point they got no other option. They're staying with, I think the name is cookie. What's the name? Cookie, uh, Foxy, something like that. His, uh, kind of like, you know, jail mama. Um, and they're staying with her. And it's like, it's a whole tale of this at this point, you know? And so um, uh, they go uh, wedding dress shopping, bring her friend. Now her friend, she kind of got the feeling of Key Rock that I low key kind of got too. I definitely think Key Rock got some controlling ways in a way that seems very like headstrong and like, I have to be the one with the solution. And a lot of men kind of have that that issue where it's like they got to be the one with the answer to the problem. And it's like, my nigga, you're not going to always have the answer to the problem. Like you're not. That's just the truth of it. And so when you don't and you are with somebody who can help you with the shit, like let them do it. And that's like why Bree had to, you know, take the phone call where Key Rock was going to go off on the PO. Like that wouldn't have helped the situation. So it's just kind of like. I see how the friend is kind of weary of Key Rock. Um, so when they're wedding dress shopping, she looks gorgeous in all her dresses. But the friend is just like steady asking her questions because the friend is doing what a friend is supposed to do. Give all the questions and arrangements and everything. Like I'm supposed to help you cross your, your T's and dot your I's in this situation. It's like, okay, if you get there, what's going to happen next? Like, are you sure you want to elope? Like if your family find out what they're going to do. And finally, she's like, also, too, you know, like, is this your idea? Is this Key Rock idea? Because not going to lie, it just seems like with us, you have no problem putting your foot down. But with Key Rock, it's always real hesitancy, you know. But she put her foot down, was like, we're getting eloped. You know, that's what it is. Because at this point, like, they keep denying me. We don't know what else to do. And staying at a hotel where a crackhead is down the street at the vending machine. Don't nobody want to do that. <laughs> Don't nobody want to say hey, crackhead central. Don't nobody want to do that. So, you know, um, she's like, we got to figure out something. Okay. So finally, Key Rock, he, although they said they weren't going to tell nobody, called his mom and she didn't answer the phone though. So his kind of like, you know, prison mom basically was like, you know, she'll love you regardless. I know she would want to be, be there and everything, but like y'all just handle it. And so Brittany, she ends up calling the, the PO. Because the friend was like, just ask, because what if y'all do this and then shit still don't work, you know? So Brittany finally calls a PO in her wedding dress that she found was super cute. And the PO basically was like, now look, I wouldn't advise y'all to do that because 
the especially in the parole situation in particularly the state of Texas, they're very weary of people just basically getting married to say that we're family. Like people will just get married to be like, oh, look, we're family. So somebody can move down there and y'all ain't really together. So if y'all do this now, especially after being denied twice, if they do this now, it's definitely going to look like, oh, y'all just, you know, trying to figure out a way in. Like y'all trying to take a shortcut. And so he basically lets her know, like, I'm going to let you know. Now, I wouldn't do it, but you do you. Like, I'm just letting you know it's going to look real funky to them that now all of a sudden y'all coming back talking about we's married now. Like, it's going to get fraudulent. And that really is unfortunate because I really do have a soft spot for Britney and Key Rock. But it's like, dang, it really does suck. Like, if you when you are a convict, ex-convict, whatever, like, once you have that stamp, people treat you differently. And it's almost like you can't move on from being like a convict or having a, a bad background and just like growing from that. So that just really sucks um, because y'all want y'all claim, you know, the society always claims they want people being, you know, contributing members of society, but they also want people to be in jail doing free labor. <laughs> and so that's like why that whole PO situation was invented because it's like the minute y'all hop out, we're going to give y'all a reason to get locked the back up. Um, so yeah, she called the PO and heard that mm, you might not want to do that. Um, so moving on, um, who else do we have? I think who's left? Let's get into um Justine and Michael. Who else is there? Is one more? Oh, Melissa and Joey. Let's go ahead and knock them out. So Melissa and Joey, is it Joey? I think it is Joey. Louis, that's what it is. I'm like, it's some ooey. Louis. <laughs> Such an Italian name. I'm like, Louis is some with a ooey. Every Italian name is always some ooey or Ario. So, um, yeah, Louis, y'all know he's on his training thing, you know, supplements, pizza store, whatever. Um, and he just got done buying a ring for Melissa. And it's Melissa's dad's birthday. So he wants to basically ask for, you know, her hand in marriage. So she was talking to her sister as they were picking out a, a gift for her dad, kind of like, you know, I don't really know what to do in these situations like this because all my past relationships, you know, these men did me dirty. And so she's like, I do kind of feel like I low-key sometimes like turn into like a, like a monster in a way to like back people off of me. And even when the minute she got with Louie, I knew that she was doing that. Melissa is literally a, a, a head case. Like, you could literally do a case on her and in just examples of how people will project like fighting and anger and everything to really truly keep from in their mind feeling like, oh, I'm falling even more in love with this person or whatever. So uh, when she does kind of be and I don't like it because it's like, girl, you really got a good like from so far. Louie looks like like he's on the track to really working to try to do things right by Melissa and by himself. Like he hasn't relapsed. He's got a job, you know, like he's trying to do it. You know, he's trying to do what he said, put his money where his mouth is. And then the fact that Melissa, you're still like bitching about it. It's like it, he feels like he's in a lose lose situation a lot of the times. And so when they go to meet her dad, Melissa, I guess hasn't seen her dad in a long time. So when she sees her dad, she's like, oh, my God, like. He's withering away, and you could tell the difference. I, I, it, mm, I don't know if her dad is kind of like one of those old school dudes where they find out they're sick, and they basically just kind of don't tell the family. They don't want to tell the family until they damn near on their deathbed. Like, hey, I got a month left to live because it's like they don't want to have that bad news. Like, they don't want to have to tell their family, hey, I'm sick or this or that. Like, something possibly is going on health wise with her pops. And I just hope um, they get that figured out. So the sister, Melissa, walk out and Louie asked for her hand in marriage. And the dad, you know, obliges. He, he was like, you know, Louie, when you first came here, obviously, I had my good eye on you. And so far, you know, you've proven, I mean, to be a man of your word, you know. So, yes, I'll approve you marrying Melissa. And so that was good to see. Um, I do think... Louie could be a great match for Melissa, but Melissa bitch is giving, don't you chase that good man away. Uh, 
Oh, good man, Savannah, don't you chase Louie away? And that's look like what she doing, because when Louie gets to the house, she all in the tub, and she's basically upset about the fact that he's doing all these videos and trying to sell supplements and all that type of stuff like that, but it kind of lures the girls in, and that literally was her main concern when he got out, especially when he was trying to get his teeth. She was like, I'll basically, he, he, it was like his version of getting his body done and getting flued out she was like i don't want you getting your teeth done and then feeling like you're gonna grin up all up into these other hoes faces and now the girls is on louis but louis like shoot this is a means to an end i'm trying to sell these whole supplements and that's it but also i didn't build me a clientele and so as that's happening she's talking to him about that while she's in the bathtub you know he's like wait a minute like i told you because she's like i don't get to spend time with you no more this and that and Girl, first, she's complaining about him being at the house too much and not having a job. And Louie communicated with you. He said, we sat down and had this conversation of, okay, both of us are going to be working, which means we're going to be sacrificing time for each other because I'm trying to save our future. Not to mention, Melissa, you want a goddamn two-care ring and you didn't want no lab-grown diamond. You wanted a real one. And that costs money. So that's why Louie's out here trying to, you know, shuck and job for the dollars. But you it's like i said for louis it always seems like a lose-lose situation so he gets a call I, it's one of the potential clients or whatever so melissa was like this is exactly what the heck i'm talking about like i'm pissed off and louis said said it right he was like you're complaining about you know personal time or whatever but here it is a time right now that we could actually be enjoying each other and sitting down and just having a moment and you're like bitching at me like look what's happening and melissa you could tell melissa clocked it as well but because she already started the fight with him she felt like she had to finish it <laughs> essentially like you could tell it was just like you totally lost the moment that you could have so he's like look what we're doing right now like we could be sitting down having a good moment but now you on him she's like i'm tired of eating pizza he was like when we go out we you know we boss up or whatever but yeah i only thing i can say for you melissa is don't you chase that good man off savannah that's all i can say uh last but not least we have michael and justine now y'all i'm not gonna lie michael and justine piss me off and they're the couple that literally i get upset at because they're the people who feel like the kids is just a thing that we'll take on and i think they truly lied to themselves about wanting baby number nine because Justine clearly is a woman who I think doesn't believe in aborting or going to the TCBY. Okay, shout out to Rodney the Voice in P Valley. Down in the valley where the girls get naked. Okay. But yeah, I think she doesn't believe in terminating pregnancies. And so when they found out she was pregnant, it was even easier for them to be like, yeah, you know, eight is great, but nine is fine. You know, like we we wanted this, you know, and it's like Mm, no y'all didn't but it's okay you take on what you got and that's exactly why they also didn't tell the family because remember they didn't tell the family about them having this baby neither and they i know they're not telling because they know exactly what they're gonna hear what the f are y'all doing having another baby y'all got eight kids already michael seems to be the only one working and y'all y'all are struggling to keep eight kids that are also not only all biologically yours they are from two separate families so now you're having to blend families and y'all have boys who are literally beefing uh michael you need to get your son with his big bike to quit bullying her son and michael here you are getting mad at them for aggressive behavior but you just knocked a hole in the goddamn wall so literally everything in this house needs to be reconfigurated and figured out and justine is now pregnant with another baby that the doctors told her not to freaking have justine is literally like on what her fifth c-section they told you to stop at three girl like they told you two c-sections ago hey shut down shop and each time you literally got pregnant within you know eight to nine months after like you could tell the doctor in the back of her mind wants to cuss justine out but you know Keep it cute and demure. Don't want to lose my job. Um, so yeah, now Justine is here at the lawyer's office having to create a will. 
And this is where I also get pissed off with parents like Justine and Michael because y'all sit here and have more kids knowing or not considering the weight that that would already put on the kids there. And Justine, you having this logic of, oh, if anything, if you have to choose between me or the baby, pick the baby. That's exactly what the daughter was like. Well, what about us? Like you sitting talking about being a mother, but what about the kids that are already here? That's where I get pissed off because it's like, is the fact that both daughters asked them, like, why would y'all have another kid? And I'm sure a lot of it got to do with the fact that they helped raise them, that they were helping raising them and still continue to do so. Hell, Justine's daughter got up out of there, went to college and was like, I like my life. And here you are coming to me telling me, hey, God forbid anything happened to me. You going to take half these kids? Up to <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> wait a minute mm, i didn't sign up for that but obviously because it's our brothers and sisters i'm sure she won't want nothing to happen to them but it's just not fair like it's very fair and it's uh, inconsiderate what they did not considering how this would affect the oldest kids especially because michael when you were away your daughter was helping raise your two sons so or like or son or daughter the ones that are still back home so it's just like when the daughters ask like what were y'all thinking and Justine could she was like, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, I don't know. You know, like when she was like, why did you have another kid? Like what? Like she was like, you know, that's a good question because she was like, were you not thinking about us in that, in that sense? And clearly y'all weren't. Y'all just was out there in with no protection and feeling like, well, <laughs> here we go again. But y'all already said money is tight. All right. So now at the doc, at the, the lawyer's office, she's basically revealing to uh michael that if she passes she wants to give her kids to her daughter and michael's hearing this for the first time like what and she was like yeah like i want her he gets pissed off immediately gets up and leave because he's taking offense to it like you told me i'm a good dad but wait a minute like you giving your kids to your daughter that's effed up but in her mind i can understand why she's thinking it's like i have a son who's highly autistic and that requires patience. The last thing that Michael freaking got is patience. You just punched a hole in the wall. So that's not going to work. And so she's realizing, talk to the lawyer, like she's damn if she do, damn if she don't. Like it's a lose-lose situation. Like I have to split up the family. I feel like Michael's better suited uh, or like my daughter's better suited to raise these kids. Like y'all really had all these kids. Like, oh, like I really, I'm so pissed off for the daughters. And I know the daughters love their siblings. But I know they're pissed off and they're not really voicing it in the way that they should to the to them, uh, Justine and Michael, because y'all keep having these kids. But we the ones watching them, you know, it's harder being like the older kids. Of course, when you're the older sibling, you take on a level of responsibility for them. But there comes a point which the amount of 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 expectation of the older kids is ridiculous. Y'all giving them six, seven, eight kids to look after. No, that's not fair to them. So I'm pissed off on the daughter's behalf. But now the lawyer basically offers like a co uh, parenting is, you know, type setup where they both can be, you know, uh, guardians over the kids and things like that. And that's just kind of where it ends off. And it's just kind of like, damn, that really sucks to have to have to make that decision. But look how irresponsible. Look where irresponsible got the two of y'all. Like y'all nine kids deep. Justine, your life is on the line. Like not only are you putting your life at the, on the line, but the way your kids are living on the line. And I just really keep thinking back to our daughter. Like, how did you not think about like your kids that are already living? You sitting here talking about being a mama and being a mom comes first. But what about the ones that are already here? That's all the question I'm going to keep asking myself. That baby, God forbid, you know, like, yes, you may lose that child, but Justine, you already got eight. <laughs> you already got eight, Justine. Like, yes, it'll be a healing process. And girl, I understand that'd be a very rough thing to go to, like, go through. But you'll live at the end of the day. You will live. You will move on. You still have eight kids. I reiterate, eight. <laughs> eight. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's kind of where the episode ended. Dang, yeah. See, this is why I can't be because I always end up going super long when I end up taking these these little goddamn things right here. I be talking too goddamn long. 
Um, yeah, so if you followed all the way through the video, I appreciate you tuning in. Y'all make sure to drop it in the comments. Tell me what you think about Justine and Michael and Justine putting her kids on her daughter. God forbid anything happened to her. Do you guys think that Melissa's going to chase Louie away? I certainly do. Oh, Daniel uh, ended up being told by his cousin, his homeboy, that he wasn't doing enough for Bianca. Well, obviously, because, girl, he just got out. Like, he literally just got out. She has very, ex uh, like, unrealistic expectations. Talking about, well, I'm expecting to get married and have a ring. And he's like, bitch, I just got out, like, three days ago. What do you mean? Like, let that man get his feet planted on the ground. Um, and so now he, having the cousin come to her when she had a drunk night, basically spilling the beans about how, you know, she ain't getting no pleasure at the situation. Now Daniel's even more pissed off. So yeah. Um, but yeah, let me get to going. I'm going to come back and talk to you guys about Salt Lake City and Real Housewives of New York. I think I'm going to do some shorts on that. So y'all stay tuned for that. Like I said, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and I'll catch y'all later. Deuces.